video tutorial on functions in R. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. All right, so let's jump into this. So functions are widely used in programming and they're used all over mathematics. They're used in statistics. We just have to get used to using them in R. Up to now, we've been slowly easing ourselves into R, but all the way we've been using functions. And so we need to think about what a function is and how can we use them to our advantage. Okay, so the goal of a function is to accept an input, so we're going to put something in it. The function is going to process it, and it's going to produce an output for us. So uh, these are things that you will commonly deal with whenever you're programming, and we'll look at some examples, and you already know a whole bunch of these. Uh, allows for standardization, standardization of computation as the function can be used in many places. Uh, lots of functions you already use, you just use it again and again and again and again, and I don't need to reprogram the actual computation every single time as I only need to call the function. Uh, this allows for shorter main code, so if you're writing code, uh, you can have another file that has all your functions in it, and then you just call them so that your other main code is cleaner and shorter, and you just comment it and say this is what this function is going to do. It also allows for efficient code writing in the sense that uh, suppose you've created a function and you realize that you want to add something to it, you can go add something to it in the function and have it return more, but it will still work with all of your other stuff and you can just keep using it from there on. Also, if you find a bug in a function, uh, that bug is located only in that function. Once you've fixed it there, you've fixed it every place that function is called. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, so a function is a mapping from an input space to an output space. And this is sort of the mathematical definition. Uh, the input space is often called the domain. The output space is often called the range if you're a mathematician. Uh, in computing, we're not going to put any as many requirements on this as uh, we would have if we were a mathematician. Um, basically, uh, mathematics says one input can only be mapped to one output, so you can't put in like the number five and get then two numbers out for it to be a function in uh, a mathematical sense. But in computing, we really don't care. All right, so here's an example of a mathematical function that you've all seen. I'm assuming that you've all taken enough math classes that you've been up to a function by now. Uh, here is our standard cubic example. Uh, we have an input space, which is the real numbers, and the output space is the real numbers. So basically what I mean by the real numbers is I can put any number in that I want, and a number will come out. So here we already know about a function. So the hist function, to make a histogram, okay? What's the input space? It takes data from the real line, right? We go out and do a whole bunch of measurements and we're going to get numbers. We throw numbers into histograms. So we would just take all the data and we throw it into our histogram function. And what does it do? Well, the output, if you remember, we talked about this before, it produces a picture and it produces uh, other things along a list. There were breaks, there were frequencies. There's a whole bunch of things attached to the output space of this. And you know a bunch of functions in R already. You know the mean function, the quantile function, the plot function, all of these functions you've been using. Why? Because they do a specific task and you don't want to have to actually write, okay, open up a blank plot. Uh, let me figure out where the breaks are. Let me figure out how tall the bars should be. Let me tell it to make the bars. It, you know, for a histogram, it, it's just already there, so we don't have to think about it. So the question is, is what if we want to create our own functions? And that's really what this video is about. I want to create functions that don't exist in R because I have a specific need to maybe chain functions together. But the key is, is I want to create my own function. All right, so let's jump over to R and get started. All right, we've jumped over to R here, and we're looking at functions in R. There's a basic format for functions in R. Basically, when you're defining a function, you need to give it a name. Then we're going to use the assignment operator. Then we're going to use the keyword function with parentheses. And inside that function, we're going to put our inputs. It can be one. It can be many. Uh, we'll see a couple examples of this. Uh, we're going to use the curly brace to open it. And then we're going to do stuff to the inputs to generate outputs. And then we're going to use a keyword return, and then we're going to use the words, whatever our outputs are, we're going to put inside these parentheses and close it off with a curly brace. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward in that sense. 
However, you just need to be careful. So one of the things I'm going to do is start off with the function we had, which was our cubic function. I'm going to just call it cubic one, and I'm going to make it a function. And you'll see that our studio changes the color because it's a keyword. I usually start like this. I start by just creating the function with the open braces, curly braces. That way I have that all done. So what I'm going to put in here is X because I have a function X. And then what I'm going to do is I usually call my output a res uh, uh, result, but I'm actually call it an output this time. Output one is going to be equal to three times X cubed plus two plus two times X squared plus one X times X plus seven. This was the function that I put in the mathematical example just a minute ago. And what we're going to do is we're going to return output 1. Now, sometimes you'll see people often leave out a return statement and often leave out this assignment. Uh, I like to put all of this in here because it's important uh, to see exactly what comes in and what comes out. When you leave that stuff out, it becomes a little, I don't want to call it, uh, it's just not as nice to read if you're trying to figure out what something is doing. Okay, so uh, here's my input, x, and notice that x shows up here, here, and here. So we're doing something to the x to get an output. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just give this a run, and when we run it, it's not really going to do anything because we haven't called it yet. However, you can see over in our environment, we have a function called cubic. And if we want to, we can click on it, and it will show us the actual code that we typed in uh, for this function. All right, so what we can do now is actually call it. So I can do cubic 1. Uh, I don't need to do the assignment operator. I just put in a number. Like, say, so what happens if I put in 3? And then I run it. This should give me a number back. Sure enough, 109 is I put in x, the number 3, and I get out an output. 109. Okay, I don't need to just put in one number, and often R is smart enough to be able to vectorize things pretty easily. So I'm going to do cubic one, and then here I'm going to do a sequence. If you remember our sequences from before, I'm going to go from minus five to five, and I'm going to go by, I don't know, 0 0.2. And let's see what this does. Okay, so this calculated the value of the function at each one of those points. And we can see the numbers here. Well, maybe we don't want to just see the numbers. Maybe we'd like to actually plot this thing and get some sense of what it looks like. So why don't we do that? So what I'm going to do is uh, write this as C1 into a variable. And then I will plot it. So let's plot uh, our x values were the sequence. So I'm going to put that in there as my x values, and my y values are c1. And I'm going to connect the dots because this is a nice one to connect the dots for, so I'm going to do type equals l. And if I run this together, I get a picture. I can zoom in on it, and I get this picture of a cubic. So it's a function. And notice I called a function. Actually, I called multiple functions. Sequence is a function. It gives me the numbers from minus 5 to 5 by 0 0.2. That way I don't have to program it every time. I can just call it, and it will do that for me. I used the plot function to be able to do this, and I used our cubic function. So these are ways we can use functions. But we don't need to just stick with boring little functions like this. We can have it do a lot more, and we can have it hand back a lot of information. So let's redo our cubic function here. And instead of just making it hard-coded like we have it currently, uh, let's put in here A, B, C, D, and E. I'm going to replace 3 with A. I'm going to replace this with B, with C, and D. Oh, I guess I don't need the E. I like the E. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm going to call this cubic 2. And what this is going to do is now I have to specify all of these values. Okay, I have to specify all of the values. So let's do this, run this function real quick. And 
now I can use cubic 2. But now I need to specify all of the values. So in this case, let's say I need a value 3. And let's suppose I just want 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, I needed four numbers, 1, 1, 1, 1. And as long as you put them in the order, R will know that it's following this order. Or you can actually do this. A equals 1. B equals 1. C equals 1. D equals 1. Either way, it'll work. It spits out the number 40. Everything works just fine. Now, when you're inside of a function, if you calculate a value inside of a function like this output 1, you can't use it outside of the function. Like, I can't come down here and just say, well, I've calculated output 1 on line 27, so if I put in here output 1, nothing happens because it, these variables that we create inside of a function do not exist outside the function. So you can't call them from within a function. You have to use the function and hand back everything that you want. Okay, so this has been our first attempt at creating these functions. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to keep creating more functions as we go along and hopefully learn to do some mathematical operations on them and ultimately be able to find out all kinds of things about functions because mathematics uses functions everywhere, probability distributions are functions, and we're going to start playing with these. All right, so move on to the next video.